Hello and welcome to this video from Applied Acoustics Engineering. My name is Matt and today we're going to be going through micro beacons. 1219As, 1319As and 1329As. We'll be going through the charge sequence, the configuration in Beacon Editor and how to turn the beacons on for operations. Thank you for joining me today. Let's get started. So here we have our micro beacon family. We have a 1219A, a 1319A and a 1329A. The common part of all of these beacons is they're provided with the same charger. It's a 5 volt, 1 amp wall mount charger, similar to what you'd get with a mobile phone. The 1219A comes with a USB to micro USB cable, and the 1319A and 1329A come to, with a USB to molded 5 pin cable. Note these cables are also used to interface with Beacon Editor, which will be shown later. To start with, we'll show the charge of a 1219A. And then we'll show a 1319A slash 29A. They both have the same charging features, so we'll just do the one to show you. To charge a 1219A, simply connect the micro USB to the connector point on the back of the beacon. The LED should start to flash. There's several different states to this LED. Every, if it flashes every two seconds, it's on trickle charge. One second is normal charge. Half a second is fast charge. And if permanently on, charge is complete. This is the same across the 1219A and the 1319A slash 29A. To charge a 1319A or a 1329A, simply connect the molded connector to the back of the beacon. The LED should start to flash. It's important to note that the 1329A will take longer to charge than the 1319A, which is about eight hours for a full cycle, due to the increased size of the battery. That being said, Let's get to Beacon Editor and show you how to set the channels. Provided with every micro beacon is the acoustic support disk. On the acoustic support disk, you'll find the installation files for Beacon Editor. Simply install these onto your computer and you should be left with a desktop icon like so. Before launching the software, make sure you have your beacon connected. So let's launch the software. When you launch Beacon Editor for the first time, you may find that your beacon doesn't show in this configuration tab. To fix this, simply go COM port and select your next COM port. Configuration tab will start to populate. So in the configuration tab, we have the model number, the serial number, the MCU revision, the DSP revision, note this will always show as non-applicable, the battery level, the depth, one beacon in the micro range supports depth, and that's the 1329D. You'll find that when you plug a 1329D into the software, that this will show yes or no. And then you have the turn on or off button here. You then have the channel set and the beacon channel itself. Because Beacon Editor is used across all our beacons, you may find beacon channels in here that are not supported by your beacon but it will show this in the event log down below. To set a channel, simply select the channel set you wish to use and select the channel. Again, when it's done, the event log will show that the channel has been applied. To set an XBlue channel, simply go to the XBlue channel set, select the frequency you wish to use, then you need to go to the XBlue tab now you can set the reply code and the turnaround time for the beacon. The final tab is the battery charge. This is the battery voltage, the current charge, the temperature of the beacon, and what charge state the beacon's in. So here we show normal charge, but once the beacon is filled, this will show as trickle charge. And that's beacon editor complete. We're moving on to turning on the beacons. To turn on the 1219A, simply screw the cap down on the back of the beacon using your fingers at first and then moving onto a screwdriver just to make sure it's secure. We'll finally show how a 1319A slash 1329A turns on. To turn on a 1319A or a 1329A, simply put the switch on plug onto the 5 pin connector. Note this is a switch on plug, not a normal blanking plug. Using a normal blanking plug will not activate this beacon.
And that concludes the video. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found this video useful and informative. This is going to be part of a series of videos we'll be releasing over the next weeks and months. So if there's anything in particular you want covered, let us know in the comments below and we'll try and put it into our schedule. If you require any other information, please go to our website, appliedacoustics.com, and all the relevant information and contact details will be there. Thank you for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon.